Welcome back to Patman Garage. We're going to jump into wiring the paddle shifters up. Um, my name is Patrick. If you hadn't seen one of my videos yet, um, we're working on my Coyote Swap Super Crew, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. So, jumping back into building the paddle shifters. Um, before I actually get started on wiring, huge shout out to Dean, my buddy. Um, local buddy, he was nice enough to go run to the junkyard for me and pick up some connectors I needed to facilitate making this plug and play. Uh, so everybody leave a comment for Dean and tell him we appreciate you supporting Fitty. <laughs> so we're going to get right into wiring here. Uh, so I got my O3 wire diagram, I have my Raptor paddle shifters, and I have my uh, 2015 harnesses. So all three of these are going to have to get merged to have an end result that we're um, after. So I ended up deciding I was going to use the, originally I was going to use the airbag contact, but long story short, I have changed my mind and I think that I'm going to use now my steering wheel switches for the uh, original steering wheel switches for the paddle shifters. Um, so this is my O3 that would plug into the clock spring and then these are both my paddles and so I need to cut these leads off and merge them onto this harness and then make sure the harness is long enough and friendly enough for my complicated install. Um, so I'm going to work on doing the merging of the harnesses and figure out how to make that look nice. <laughs> well, this may not look like much, but this is an hour worth of work. Uh, I started making a spreadsheet of different connections and all of the things that they're going to go to so i've now separated my two paddles from my uh, donor raptor steering wheel harness and then i've built a custom harness for the 2003 side so this will facilitate the using the original horn connection and then this will plug into the clock spring and then these three wires are leftovers from my cruise control switches and then I just so happen to have four wires on this side, but not actually. So the two that have the knot tied in them, this guy and this guy. And so the green wire and the, what is this, a black with a red tracer. Uh, so both of those actually were pinned together on my donor harness. These two green and black with red actually went into the exact same pin together. Kind of hard to show that, but you get the idea. Anyways, so those two are essentially the same wire, which would be the, uh, I guess like the signal return equivalent for the paddle shifters. So these two can get tied together and then I'll have a plus and a minus. And then, so I essentially have three wires here and I have three wires here. So we're gonna make those merge together while adding to our spreadsheet to make sure that we keep track of where everything goes. And then this harness will be complete. So I went ahead and got out my uh, extra steering wheel because uh, I wanted to mock up the lengths of these harnesses before I actually install them. Because uh, the last thing I need to do is have a bundle of wires uh, trapped in the back of the steering wheel. So I do need to leave enough slack that I can slide the switches back. So there's going to be a balance there of how much is too much and how much is not enough. Um, but I've got basically this guy is going to plug in here. And I've got... Here, I'm going to do it this way. Yep, disregard the, ho the horn switch. So I've got these three wires coming out, which will need to get connected to these or two plus two wires. And uh, as you can see, I got a lot happening here. So I'm gonna try to thin that up a little bit and make that look a little nicer and not have so much bulk. And uh, we're gonna jump on to do that right now. And there we have it. I got a custom harness, got paddle, paddle. It's all gonna plug into the clock spring. And then this will be my horn contacts so I should be able to have the uh, steering uh, the airbag undisturbed I'm gonna lose functionality in my steering wheel switches but 
cruise control didn't work on the Coyote Swap anyways. I have another custom build for that in the works. Um, but it's kind of interesting, the uh, similarity. So this is the original. Um, goodness. This is the original switches. So I've got the on-off, set, excel, resume, coast. have all those, but similarities here. I've got my same steering wheel, uh, clock spring input, and my same airbag uh, horn inputs. So, it's, uh, like I said, it's kind of cool that, you know, this is what I had and this is now what I do have. So, essentially, electrically, what I've done is replaced these switches and these switches with uh, some some pedals. So, now we can get to installing. Well, my note sheet's gotten a lot more complicated. Um, I will have to streamline that and make that look a little bit nicer, a final version of that, but I've got everything electrically hooked up as far as the 2003 goes. Um, so, I showed you my, well, uh, that's my original cruise control switches I was testing with. And I showed you my paddles that I built my custom harness for. I just got done testing the hood, the horn. Horn works great. Um, so currently have three wires coming out of the dash. That will then have to get integrated into my shifter wiring. That's going to be another day. But as far as the actual install of the steering wheel, I'm going to go ahead and get the steering wheel put on, get the paddles put on, airbag, all that good stuff. Um, so I'm going to jump into doing that which I'm sure will be lots of fun. Um, and hopefully I don't forget a step along the way of how many different layers we have to do. So wish me luck and I'm gonna jump into it. About a third of the way through the install and I was getting ready to put my airbag on and then I realized that I am, even though I'm not gonna use them and electrically they aren't gonna be connected to anything, I'm gonna need some steering wheel switches installed. So I'm going to pick up where I left off. I was having fitment issues on the back side with getting the um, having fitment issues actually getting the switches through the, uh, the openings in the steering column cover back here so I think I'm going to end up pulling out the uh, pull out the multifunction switch on this side which is just two screws relatively easy and that may give me a little more room to get the cover to slide back um, it's worth a shot we'll see how that goes okay I figured out what my fitment issue was and I feel kind of dumb but <laughs> I kept I got everything lined up, but I couldn't get the switch to actually slide over far enough. And then it dawned on me just now when I was looking again to figure out what was hitting is I had made those special low profile screws that uh, have a shorter head on them uh, that hold the airbag in. And I'm not using those, I'm using the original ones. So my when I try to push the switch in into its place, I'm actually hitting the back of the airbag screw. So I'm gonna have to swap screws and then try this again. So with the switch removed, um, you can see the airbag screw. If I can get my hand out of the way of the light. Uh, you can see the airbag screw right here. So it was actually, like I said, blocking my switch from coming over. All right, I at least got this airbag screw swapped out and the switch fits much nicer. I'm still not exactly in the clear yet because I still need to be able to wedge my two little screws to hold down the paddle. I need to get in this little gap right here. I can move the cover around a little bit, but I need to line up holes that I can't see with, sh with screws that I can barely hold on to. <laughs> oh boy, this is fun. Well, we can add that to my list of things that are my stupidity or my silliness or whatever. So not only did I have that wrong screw on the airbag side, but it also occurred to me that I 
could turn the steering wheel. I had originally thought about this in my plan to put the steering column, the back cover on, um, but never really thought about it for the actual pedal installations. So it just gives me more room to work up here where I'm not right up against the ignition. Um, so this side is completely bolted in. So I'm gonna spin the steering wheel and I gotta swap my airbag screw and then I'll put the pedal in and we'll get, hopefully get this thing on the, the downhill side of getting this thing wrapped up. Finally got the paddles in and got the steering wheel cover on. I had to do quite a bit of massaging to get it to fit right where I was happy with it. But the end result is it looks really sharp. Um, fitments is pretty good here considering, you know, aftermarket steering wheel and super modified and brackets have all changed and all that. But the fitment looks good. Um, so next thing is going to be... I'm gonna probably go ahead and do the paddles, which is just, they pop in place and there's a roll pin that goes down through the top of them. Um, so we'll work on doing that and then I'll put the multifunction switch back in and then put the column covers and stuff back together. Getting close. Steering wheel is still all wrapped up and I still gotta put all my trim on, but I just can't, can't help myself. God, that's so cool. Still gotta wire them up, but that's gonna, that looks so wild. The world's first paddle shifted 10th generation F-150. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can't wait to get this thing completed and get the wrapping off of it and all that good stuff. Well, almost there. And last but not least, we need to pull off the protective wrap. There we go. Now I do still need to wire it in, but um, the actual install part is done, so that's, that's awesome. And it looks, looks good, feels good. So I did leather on the top, leather on the bottom, flat bottom, because it'll be easier to get in and out. And then grippy Alcantara leather on the sides. It's gonna be sweet. And then obviously, paddles are right there um, I did notice a when I was putting the multifunction switch back in that if I pull if I pull the switch to brights I'm like right on touching where the paddle is but it doesn't actually hit so that's good there we go I've got my diagram books laid out uh, this is my 15 book, my 03 book, and I had previously printed off some of the uh, 2018 diagrams for the uh, Raptor paddle shifters. Um, I did find something kind of interesting with these. Get over here where I can get some light in here. Um, this is the 2018 Raptor diagram. 2018. And... Uh, it's really interesting. It calls it a phantom or a raptor. So I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's something else in a different market that's called a phantom. I've never seen that before, but interesting uh, description there. Well, might be worth doing some research there. Figure out what's going on with that. Um, but to jump into the wiring, to jump into the wiring, I have my diagram that I wrote my notes of when I did my. Uh, Call, or my floor shifter conversion which has the up down buttons on it and um, so I've identified the wires I need to add on to are going to be these three right here and since I'm going to are going from essentially from the O3 wiring to the donor 2015 wiring I'm going to add a connector in in line with that um, to go ahead and um, in case I need to service it somehow, I'll have a connector to remove it instead of uh, just hardwiring everything and have to cut back back cut it. So I'm gonna work on getting the wiring installed. I've got a three pin connector and I have three wires on the harness. And then these are the three that are coming off of the new paddle shifters. So I'm gonna get all those merged up and then we'll take it for a test drive. So I got my three wires connected and connect on both ends. 
and all the correct wires identified and I've got all my notes on my chart. So uh, I just need to tidy up the wiring a little bit, but um, we should be in good shape. Um, and then I'll have to put the this panel back on, but I'm gonna kind of wrap some of this up so it's not quite so uh, loose, loosey-goosey and uh, we'll get back into it. All right, so last but not least, I need to clean and put away all the tools, put away the diagrams, put away all the extra heat shrink stuff, and then I can tuck my center console wiring back together. So I, I ended up uh, back pulling some of my back pulling some of my slack for my shifter harness, so I had extra room to work under the dash. So I need to work the slack back over here where it belongs, and then we'll get this all, all the way back together. I got my chart completely filled out, and that's how many how many different times it changes colors from different connector to different connector to different connector to custom harness to clock spring to steering wheel to a custom harness. So <laughs> no big deal. It's easy, right? That'll wrap up this build video, and then we'll get into wiring it on the next one. I appreciate you checking out another video of mine. Um, this is a super fun build. It's totally different and custom, which is what I like to do. So <laughs> um, I appreciate y'all, and I will catch you on the next one. So I appreciate y'all, and I will catch you on the next one.